Hi, and welcome back to my shop. In the last episode, I completed the case construction for my hanging cabinet, and I fitted in the shelves as well as the divider that sits on top of the three drawers. Now, before I can actually go ahead and glue up the case, I still need to insert the vertical dividers that go between those three drawers. And I need to do that before I glue them up because they're going to fit into dados that will be cut into this divider in the bottom of the case. So I'm going to get started there and then that will give me the last piece I need to actually glue up the carcass. I've gone ahead and disassembled the case again and you can see here that I have that top divider. It's labeled as top there and then I've got the bottom here and I have my blue tape so I know that this is the bottom of the base. So the first thing I'm going to do is just flip this over and do my chalk lines. And this, again, is going to ensure that when I go to cut these dados, I'm cutting it on the right side of the piece. And that'll, you know, prevent me from making a pretty big mistake if I were to cut that on the bottom or the wrong side of the divider. And then looking at my SketchUp diagram again, I can see that the inside edge of this divider needs to be exactly five inches in from the inside edge. So I'm measuring from the inside of where I wasted out my material for my pins here. I'm just going to make a little mark there. And do the same on the other side. And I'm just going to extend my line. And then using a saddle square, I'm extending that line around the back, and I'll show you why that's important. Because my um, bottom divider piece here, uh, which is really the top of the drawer case, uh, because this is actually sitting in a shoulder, um, I, I don't have the same reference point in the inside of those dovetails that I have on the bottom of the carcass itself. So the easiest way for me to do this is to flip it around make sure I have it lined up with the front. And then I can transfer my lines over. Then I can go ahead and extend those lines on my bottom piece. By using a referential method here, this ensures that my marks are going to be in the exact same spot without introducing any possibility for measurement error. And then I'm also just going to put a little X here so that I make sure when I'm laying out my dados, I'm wasting out on the right side of that reference line. And then I'm just going to use a setup bar here this is a half inch. I'm just going to make a mark there and that's going to make sure I just leave roughly a half inch stop at the tops of my dados. And just like I did with the drawers, I'm just going to use a little piece of blue tape at those stop marks just to make them very highly visible when I'm cutting out my stop dado. Now I had some unique challenges in figuring out how to cut these stopped dados. For one, because they are stopped, I can't use my table saw and my dado stack to cut these. And what's even created more of a challenge is that this is the um, divider stock that I cut, and it's only 3 16 of an inch. I would ordinarily consider just hand cutting these stopped dados. Even though they're stopped, you can't use a back saw to start the cut, but you could use a combination of a marking knife, some chisels, and more importantly, um, either a dado plane or a router plane. Unfortunately, I don't have any dado planes, and my router plane uh, has a, a bit that's a quarter of an inch wide, so it's far too wide for me to be able to hog out the waste here. So I had to get a little bit creative. What you see here is just a porter cable dovetail jig. It's typically used if you're cutting a lot of, you know, machine cut dovetails and they're all, you know, kind of evenly spaced. It's uh, not a terribly sophisticated uh, jig here. But, little known fact, it also comes with a template for doing dados. And that's what the 
the jig is that I have on here right now. Now this jig is really designed to be using um, much bigger bits, so you're probably cutting more of like a half inch uh, dado with this. So what I did is I just found some material and double stick taped it onto the, the fence and essentially created a zero clearance insert. I then chucked in the standard bushing that goes with this jig, put in the smallest bit that I could find, which is just shy of that 3 16 and then I used a plunge router to just run it down that piece of stock, so now I have a perfect zero clearance insert in there. What that will then allow me to do is put my stock into the jig and if I just line up the pencil mark that I made with that zero clearance insert, I know exactly where my dado is going to be cut. And before I go ahead and cut the dado, one last step I'm going to make is just to score those fibers. This way I'll know I'm going to get a nice clean cut. And because I've got the zero clearance insert, this is a really simple extra step to ensure that I get a good result. All right, well, here goes nothing. I'm looking down, making sure I am seeing my chalk line, so I'm cutting on the right space. Double checking my line, I can see the little X. I've got my line scored, I can see my blue tape. I've pretty much done everything I can to ensure success here, but you never know. <laughs> I'll just pop this out. And I got a really nice result. I think adding those uh, scored lines definitely helped a little bit, but I've got a good stopped dado now. Fairly low risk and fairly easy to operate. I've gone ahead and squared off the ends of my stopped dados. This is the bottom of the case. So my last step before I can glue everything up is that I need to cut a shallow rabbit all around the back and that's going to be the recess that will receive the back of the case. So I went and took each of the pieces in the, uh, the case work and I put a chalk mark exactly where each of these rabbits needs to go again so that I won't accidentally put it in the wrong place. Obviously it's you know I'm not gonna put it in the wrong place on the bottom or the top because it's curved but the sides would be a pretty easy place for me to rabbit uh, the wrong side. And these have to be stopped so I have just put a mark a quarter of an inch out from the end of each piece. And then what I'll do is line that up with my zero clearance on my fence and then just drop that piece down and then cut my rabbit across and pull it back up as soon as the line hits the fence edge on that end. I've just dry assembled the outside case one more time before I glue it up. I have all of my dados cut now, all of them squared off, and I have my rabbit cut all the way around the back, squared off those uh, ends as well. So I'm pretty much in good shape, ready to glue. There's one thing I'm gonna try with this glue up that I haven't used in the past, and I'm hoping it's gonna give me even better results during the clamping process. Because I've got these kind of wide dovetails on either side, what I did is cut these little dovetailed strips out of some uh, spare mahogany that I had. And what I'm gonna do is take just a little piece of double stick tape and put two of these on either side. So that means all of my clamping pressure is gonna go against just those dovetails and I won't run the risk of putting any pressure further down on the case where it's going to risk actually bowing the piece in and taking me out of square. I've got all of my little strips taped onto the end. So now I'm ready to start my glue up.
Well, here you have the final glued up case. Now that I have all of the, the dovetails glued up, that allows me to then move on to the next phase of the project where I can fine tune fitting the, the shelf here or the top divider for the drawers, those vertical dividers, as well as cutting the shelves to final width.